morning. We are near Lake Placid, New York, and we are about to do the Brewster Peninsula Trail. Um, it's just a little over two miles long, pretty flat, more of a walk than a hike. Um, yeah, I don't know what we're going to see. Some woods. Maybe a Some peninsula. Leaves. Perhaps a peninsula. in New York State's Adirondack Mountains is the home and grave of abolitionist John Brown. On the night of October 16, 1859, Brown and his followers assaulted the U.S. arsenal at Harper's Ferry, planning to use the captured arms in an extensive campaign for the liberation of the slaves in the South. Brown was captured on October 18, 1859, imprisoned in Charlestown, Virginia, tried by the Commonwealth of Virginia, and hanged on December 2nd, 1859. His body was returned to North Elba and was buried in front of his home on December 8th, 1859. The remains of several of Brown's followers who fought and died at Harper's Ferry were moved to this small graveyard in 1899. Also on display is the permanent exhibit, Dreaming of Timbuktu, which shares a story of Timbuktu, a farming community created by local abolitionist Garrett Smith for black families to migrate to the Adirondacks and homestead. By providing land to black men, the men were entitled to the right to vote, a crucial step in the fight against racism and slavery. So if you're in Lake Placid, New York, a fun little pit stop for you might be to come see the ski jumps. Um, these were actually the ones built for the 1980 Winter Olympics that were held in Lake Placid, New York. Um, I did read that they've been a little bit more modernized since then, but I think the tall one on the right is about 400 feet tall, so that's kind of crazy to think about. Um, and they're the only ski jumps in North America that are used for, that can be used in the winter and the summer. I think it said we actually saw a couple of people coming down the smaller one earlier, um, but there doesn't appear to be anyone up there right now. There's also a gondola over there that you can take all the way up the little mountain there so you can see um, what they look like from the top. And we have Riley so we can't do that right now, but I think it was like $12 a person. But yeah, pretty cool. Neat little pit stop. Alright, we just made it to the ADK Street Eats food truck. Hoping for hot dogs, because that's what we saw online, but that was our summer menu, which is cool. So I ended up getting a gyro, or gyro, or gyra, or gyara. There's like 10 or different... hero. Hero. Yeah, I say gyro. Also got some Sidewinder fries, which didn't know they had seasoning on them, but that's okay. So we'll just clean one of those off and get that to Riley, so she can have her New York fry. But first, let's have a bite of this gyro. What all is on a gyro? Well, let me tell you. Um, traditionally lamb, and by the look of this meat, I would say that this is lamb. It also has some lettuce, tomato on there, maybe some onions, and then what looks like mayonnaise is actually tzatziki sauce. 
which is like literally my favorite sauce in the entire world. It's like a Greek yogurt, lemon, I think there's dill in tzatziki. It's really good. Yeah, I learned from the lobster roll video to not eat 37 bites on camera. So now I'm gonna have a Sidewinder fry. These little curly Q fries are like some of my favorite. You don't really get them everywhere, but you know, it's like a spicy, maybe Old Bay based. I'm not sure. Really, really good. Yeah, this is awesome. So I got tacos. I think they're kind of famous for their tacos. I assume that because their logo is a taco. Mm. Um, so I got two different kinds. I got the Americano, which just has your usual ground beef, cheese, lettuce, pico de gallo, I think is on it. And then I also got the Al Pastor, mm -hmm. um, which has like marinated pulled pork, lettuce, cheese. Um, what else is on this? Pineapple. Mm -hmm. Cilantro. Cilantro. And I just squeezed a little bit of lime juice on there and put some Mama Cholula hot sauce. Is that how you say that? Cholula? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm gonna try the Americano one first. I'm sure this will just look lovely on the camera. We both learned something from our last eating one. video. Um, really, really good. Um, the ground beef has a little bit of spicy seasoning on it, which mixes really well with the, like, sweet tanginess of the pico de gallo. And now I'm gonna give the, the al pastor one a try, which looks even messier. If I can get it off of the thing. Quite, quite juicy. Very messy, but very delicious. I like this one a lot better than the Americana. They're both really good, but I love the the marinated pulled pork in that one. And then you get the, the little sweetness of the pineapple on top. It sounds like an odd combination, but it goes together really well. Here we are in the North Pole. Come to see Santa. And it appears that no one is home. No Santa. No elves. No Dasher. No Dancer. No Prancer or Vixen. Just an empty, desolate parking area. So sad. A new home for a while, let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back, take my time, just enjoy the ride. A new man passing by, life is good, best I've ever felt. Get me up, so in new, so where I can find myself. Welcome to our yurt. So this is where we've been staying for the past couple of days up in Jay, New York. Um, if you do not know what a yurt is, it's essentially a um, giant round canvas tent kind of thing. You can hear the rain probably dropping on the canvas roof now. Um, so we've got a little kitchen over here the full-size fridge, some pots, pans, utensils, stove. The oven does not work, but the stove top works. Um, some spices, 
Then you got a little dining room seating area over here. A little thingamajig. A little island prep station. A little that's, island prep station. That's where I've been doing a lot of the prepping because it's nice. <laughs> oh, and over where you come in, they have places to hang up your coats, little shelves to put some things. And then the heat source for the yurt is this gigantic wood stove. I don't think I've ever seen a wood stove so large before. This is the coolest wood stove that I have ever used. Uh, they actually drew a picture of the wood stove because there's so many different ways to control stuff so uh, this thing is awesome it gets to like 600 degrees in about 15 minutes and then it just sits and camps out so really cool wood stove we got very toasty the first night yeah i have a bad habit of overdoing it the first night i was like well you know we've been outside it'll be nice and then then it's 95 degrees and nobody's happy then you got your living area where riley's hanging out currently on one of the couches Say hi, She's too early for her. Much too early. And then you're like, but where, where do you sleep? So behind this wall over here, you've got one bedroom, which is some bunk beds. Probably more for kids than adults, but adults will sleep here. Twin, twin stairs. Little cute desk. Mm -hmm. Dresser. No window in this room. There's three windows, one door. Yeah. So this. That's why it's door. Yeah, that's what's the There's lamp. Only one little lamp. Yeah. And then on the other side of the wall, this is the queen bedroom. So you got queen bed, nightstands. There is a window. Um, two dressers actually, and a little, a little makeshift closet area with some hangers if you want to hang stuff up. So it's not that private but it is nice that it has the wall separating the bedrooms from the living area mm -hmm. it's still open because that's where your heat comes from so we have both never stayed in New York before so we were really looking forward to staying here and when we arrived a couple of days ago it was abnormally warm this weekend that we were here. It was literally in like the mid 70s. So I'm sure that's why it was more of an issue. But we came in and started unpacking our stuff. And there was about, I don't know, 50, 50 ladybugs. Is that a fair assumption? Uh, maybe even a little bit more, yeah. Yeah, 50 to 75 ladybugs and three wasps just flying about. If you don't know Candace and I, can't, who, I mean, nobody likes wasps. I mean, ladybugs are fine, but I don't want, you know, 75 of them flying around my small... Room. Yeah, they did hit us continuously. <laughs> I... This is Andrew talking, by the way. I am terrified of wasps. Honeybees, that's fine. Bumblebees, that's fine. Wasps, yellow jackets. Nope, nope, nope. So I was able to kill two of them. Um, one of them was out front of the door, right on the edge of the door, and then one of them was in our bedroom, in the window that I killed. And then for the past couple days, I don't see them up, up there either, which worries me. <laughs> there was a very large looking hornet hanging out up there. Um, it's not anybody's fault. It was unseasonably warm and sunny. But I don't know. I like, knew the yurt like, wasn't fully like enclosed, but mm -hmm. we were kind of thinking more for like temperature wise that it might get you know chilly if it was really cold at night not really that there would be like a hundred bugs in here so it's just been a little a little bit of anxiety you know from the from the walks that you don't know where they are mm -hmm. and then you hope they don't attack you in your sleep yeah but it is a it's a cute place yes yeah. oh yeah i mean i'd come here again i we didn't think that it would be 75 degrees in very upstate new york when we got here so um, on the bright side, because of the temperature, we got a couple of little bonus yeah. features that we wouldn't have had if it was like 30 degrees outside. And I think it's time to show those bonuses right now. So the bonus features we were talking about, we're actually going to go out here and show you real quick. And it's a little gross and rainy. Oh, and you do have a nice little porch deck area oh I feel I feel I feel I feel so alive as I reach out reach out reach out reach out to the sky I found my
This outdoor kitchen has been up and ready for us to use. Normally it's only available in the summertime because they don't want to have the water hooked up and lines and pipes freeze and all that kind of thing. Things are really heavy so I'm going to put you down. A table for your dogs, <laughs> you know, when they get too heavy. But yeah, you've got a giant sink. Drying racks, stove, and an oven. Yep, the oven does work here. A ceiling fan. Mm hmm. Some pretty solar lights all around. There is also a grill over there. And just past the grill is the fire pit for the yurt. A nice bench, a couple of Adirondack chairs, and of course, a beautiful view to look at and that is west so that is where the sun sets every single night it's been beautiful and then right over here we have a very nice very large very comfortable hammock that Riley and I spent some time in last night before it rained of course so if you come around to the other side of the outdoor kitchen dun dun dun, dun. It's a shower. And a sink, but who cares about the sink? Yep, it is a outdoor hot water shower. You may be thinking, okay, but I see nowhere to use the bathroom. Well, folks. That's where the sink comes in. <laughs> hot and cold flushing, your choice. <laughs> That's going to be around here. It's what one could expect for an outhouse. It's covered. It's open, which is kind of nice, I suppose, for health reasons. And then whenever you're done with your business, you, you add some wood shavings, which are probably supposed to stay dry. And then just down from where you park and where the outhouse is, is the firewood station. He has a ton of firewood stacked up in there ready to go. He's got a couple of mauls, an axe, a hatchet for you to break up into small pieces, and it's 50 cents a log, um, which is actually really reasonable. We have paid some awful prices. I'm gonna call you guys out at Wolf Creek. You guys are ridiculously overpriced with your firewood. It's like seven dollars and 63 cents for about five pieces of firewood so that was pretty awful but here it's 50 cents a log and he gave you his paypal account his venmo account or as always you could just leave cash um, and it's really nice just to be able to venmo somebody 15 or 20 bucks for wood and not have to come up with the cash on the spot on your way out Just checked out of the yurt in Jay, New York a few hours ago. Uh, we're only two hours away from our next place, so we've kind of been killing time. Uh, it rained a lot this morning, so we didn't really want to go hiking and kayaking. was just too much of an effort for right now. So, for the past hour, we've just been sitting at the Olympic Ski Park, hoping that somebody might go downhill like they did yesterday. I don't know if Candace can even zoom in that well or if you can see it, but right now they're putting something on the uh, slopes. I'm thinking they're getting ready to switch from grass to snow, but I'm just making that up. So uh, we ordered some food for pickup from the Big Slide Brewing Company, which is literally four minutes down the road. Uh, got a couple of salads, 
Might have something in a box on the dashboard for Riley since her fry didn't work out yesterday. But what we did order was the Send a Roni pizza. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling the Send a Roni or the Send has something to do with going off of a ski jump, like the big Send. I have no idea. But the Send a Roni is a red sauce pizza with a house cheese blend sliced pepperoni green peppers calabrian chilies grated parmesan and a honey drizzle so we thought that sounded really good not sure why i always have to do the eating on camera hey i ate on camera yesterday yeah but i eat on camera like every day sometimes we don't even add it on youtube i just film myself in the morning having a sandwich <laughs> also just realized literally all of our food taste things happen in the car yeah it's easier with riley but we yeah. do go out to restaurants sometimes just not with riley yeah <laughs> Ooh, that hot honey drizzle is so spicy <laughs> oh my god maybe it's the peppers oh this is super super spicy i like spicy <clears throat> i don't know why i wasn't expecting it to be so spicy did I mention that it was spicy? Whew. Um, a couple years ago, we did the Pocky One Chip Challenge. This is not the same. We highly recommend. It was a fun experience. We filmed it, but we destroyed the filming because it got bad real quick. Um, it's a really good pizza. Really spicy, like in a good way. Like, I'm shocked. Yeah, so we're going to finish this. Might see what's in that box up there for Riley Girl. And we'll see what we get into after that. Just so people don't think I was overreacting. Candace is literally in tears from the spiciness of that pizza. <laughs> I just wanted to get a raw moment. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop filming her now. Like we said yesterday, the ADK Street Eats food truck French fries were way too spicy for Riley, so we ordered a side of fries. These ones also have something on them, but they're similar to Arby's fries, which she likes, so. Riley, <laughs> are you ready for your New York fry? I think she's ready. This is fry number two? Fry number three? Fry number three. Fry number three from New York. That's all you're getting, just the one. Was that good? Okay, Riley, have you preferred Maine, Vermont, or New York the best. <laughs> Which one, honey? She says all fries are equal in her eyes, which is good. Okay, well, now we can cross it off the list, Miss Beans. Now, we're not going to any other states on this trip, so I think you're done with fries for a few weeks. Probably not, but we probably won't film.